Back in the prehistoric year of 1993, we had Madden and a bunch of other football games that are so indistinguishable you couldn't even tell me which games were which even if $1 million were on the line. Most were just run-of-the-mill football games that had about as much impact as an online petition on change.org, and most of them would be promptly forgotten. One game managed to stand out of all of this at the time, and that game certainly wasn't Sterling Sharp end-to-end, -end. it was Mutant League Football. Mutant League Football is a football game where you play in a league that consists of mutants. Wow, thank you for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. I mean, there's an option of how often you want players to die, and there's a team called the 60 Winers. I don't know if that's a parody of the 49ers or just a nice 69 reference. Either way, it sets the stage for what you're about to play. Mutant League Football is just over the top. You have football fields that have stage hazards like landmines, lava pits, and bottomless pits. All these things can kill you. That's practically the objective. You're a football player and you're killing other people. This game beat Ray Lewis by a good decade. It doesn't just stop at the players. You can even go ahead and kill the ref if you want. Killing the ref is only like a five yard penalty, but so is standing off sides. It's crazy to see that literal murder is given the same punishment as lining up wrong. Not even the court system is that bad. Well, maybe. Now having said all that, is Mutant League Football a good game? Eh, not really. The game has weird controls, which is par for the course when it comes to sports games of this era. And it's so choppy at times, it would be a smoother experience if you were to rapidly pause and unpause a YouTube video throughout its duration. There's not much reason to play today besides the novelty of someone dying during a football game, which is admittedly pretty cool. <laughs> it was a fine game for the time, and that was because the engine that was used to make the game was the same engine that was used to make Madden 93. This game was popular, believe it or not. I mean it. There was a spinoff called Mutant League Hockey, a planned basketball spinoff, and there was a TV series called Mutant League that I never heard of until doing research for this video. I mean, the series got a damn cartoon. Now, if that's the case, then why is it that Mutant League is practically non-existent today? Oh my God! Ah, EA. That makes sense. The only thing more murderous than a Mutant League football player is EA when it comes to their own IPs and development studios. Which is a shame, really. Sports games really started to boom in the early to mid 2000s, especially over the top arcade ones. I think Mew and League Football would have fit right in with NFL Street and NFL Blitz. If I had to guess, it was because maybe the potential M rating that the game would most likely receive, and EA wanted no part of that. Or maybe the NFL stepped in and said that they don't want a game where you can blow up halftime performers for no reason to come from the same publisher that develops the Madden series. I'm just speculating. The only time we would ever see Mutant League Football from EA again is when it, along with dozens of other dead EA franchises, were shattered out into a compilation of games called EA Replay that was exclusively on PSP to ensure that nobody could buy it. Years would pass and series creator Michael Menheim would put up a Kickstarter for a spiritual successor called Mutant Football League getting around the copyright by just switching two words around. I actually think he might be like some genius. And that's fitting because the game is 100% parody. Look at the team names. Crokelin Invaders, Grim Bay Attackers, Philadelphia Evils. It's not just the team names, the Crokio Dome, Evil SN, MFL. The players are parodies as well, including Airborne Dodgers and Patrick Mahomes. Also references to Duke Nukem and a Xenomorph because why not at this point? Check this out. There's a guy named Sladrian Peterson and he's holding a tree branch. I wonder where they got the inspiration for this character. I mean, come on, don't stop there. Where's Homicide Hernandez? I mean, honestly, if you're an NFL fan scrolling through this, it's pretty fun. And each team has a description that mimics their NFL counterpart. So there's actually some lore here, believe it or not. As far as the actual game goes, it's pretty insane. Just look at it. He's leaving a wake of destruction in his path. That was a nice piece of running, Grim. Mutant League football actually resembles NFL Blitz a lot.
even attacking players after the play is over. Great job. Now let's try to score a touchdown. The game has a lot of elements from its original Genesis counterpart. Killing is alive and well. Wait, what? Each player has this life bar, and when the life bar depletes, you die. It can be strategic to try and deplete a player's life bar as they have the ball, so a fumble is caused. But what would mutant football be without its mutant powers? I'll tell you. Football. Is that what you came here to see? Just football? On both offense and defense, you can go into a dirty trick playbook. These include things like pulling out a shotgun or a chainsaw or making the ball explosive. He might have managed to dig out a yard on that you can also revive dead teammates like a wish on the Dragon Balls. And you can bribe the ref. Bribing the ref means that the refs will call nonsensical penalties against the other team. So I guess this makes it closer to the actual NFL than we thought. In order to stop this, you can kill the ref. It's a jailbreak, and the defense jumps offside to kill the ref. Ho -ho. The game even lets you control the ref to run away from the other team trying to kill him. Of course, nothing compares to the best power-up you can possibly imagine. Farting. That is a disgusting act. The hazards return, and they have some differences. Like, look at the ice walls in not Lambeau Field. I was actually able to take advantage of them during an onside kick and get the ball back. One of my many pet peeves when it comes to arcade football games is that they don't change the field or add any interactable objects except the legendary football game Jerry Rice and Nidus Dog Football. The graphics. That's, you know, that's really what this is all about. Anyway, let me do a Lambo leap. Oh shit. The dirty tricks are fun, and when you have multiple of them going on at once, things get pretty hectic. Really have a way of extending the red zone on account of all that blood. That's how you run the football. Oh, holy Montezuma's revenge. That's a crap your pants and die tackle. Well, that's fun. The game suffers from the same problems as a lot of arcade football games do. It's specifically playing defense in general. Yes, it's fun to send players to the Shadow Realm via Chainsaw, but on any ordinary play, the defense is just not fun. It's only useful to control a defensive lineman that's rushing in. Trying to play zone or, heaven forbid, man-to-man -man defense is so hard due to the fast-paced nature of the game. For defensive passing, the AI just lets balls zip right over their head like a Dave Chappelle joke that's being told to a white kid from the suburbs. As far as defending passes go, there's no button to do interceptions or to swat the ball. It's automatic. So yeah, you can imagine the amount of times I was in the perfect position to pick off a pass, but I do nothing instead. This is number one bullshit. Stuff like this is annoying, and unfortunately you'll see it a lot considering playing defense is a huge part of football. As far as commentary, we have NBA Jam and NFL Blitz announcer Tim Kitzrow. Oh no, I'm sorry, I mean Grim Blitzrow. Welcome to NFL Game Day. Grim Blitzrow here. He does a good job, but overall the commentary is pretty hit and miss. It's funny sometimes, but the other commentator who is also voiced by Kitsro is doing his absolute best to do the most grating voice that's humanly possible. Oh, holy Montezuma's revenge! That's a crap your pants and die tackle! Now, that Montezuma was very vengeful, but Nick Briggs wonder what made him so mad. Yeah, probably all the diarrhea! Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, they probably ran out of toilet paper when he was in some all inclusive resort. What the fuck are you talking about? After a while, I think the sound of microwaving a toaster would be more preferable to listen to. There's not just commentary though, the players themselves have things to say after big plays. It's a little disappointing there's no voices for these, but they're more often than not pretty funny. And uh, I don't even think I can comment on some of this stuff. This adds some personality to the game, and hey, I like it overall. Mutant Football League is actually different from other sports games in terms of content because they actually supported the game post-release as opposed to just releasing it and then waiting till next year. The game would end up adding a Dynasty mode for just five bucks. 
Now, this is something they didn't really have to do, but it's more than welcomed. It starts off with the painfully stereotypical sports cliche of, your team is full of losers and you, as an underdog, have to do the unthinkable and win the mutant bowl. That's about as original as a butterfly tattoo. But this is a pretty good mode that adds some more longevity to the game. You build your team up with experience points, signing free agents, and making trades. You have a budget to account for, and you can't just shove steroids into your ass like you can in Blitz the League, but you can't bring guys back from the dead, so it's almost like the same thing. Live from your grave. You work your way through the season to eventually play and win the Mutant Bowl, and after that you try again in order to create a dynasty. Hence the name of the mode. When you're done with Dynasty, you could take your murderous ways online where the game is, in my opinion, at its most fun. You'll be waiting 7,318 hours to actually find a game, but when you do, it's really fun and no lag. Wow. I even made some kid rage quit. Aren't I the greatest gamer ever? The long wait times to find a game has to be indicative of how the game sold. I can't find any sales data on Mutant Football League, but someone who only has 26 wins is in the top 20 leaderboard on PlayStation and the game has been out for years at this point. Overall, Mew and Football League was a return to the crazy football madness of the original. It's mostly fun, mostly funny, and all gruesome. I mean, to celebrate a win, you rip your opponents in half. Talk about being a sore winner. I'm impressed with how well the game looks and feels. The animations are brutal and everything makes sense. Well, as much sense as a rolling extraterrestrial scoring a touchdown could, looking at other indie football games struggle so much while being years in development while this game just leapfrogs over them shows how much care they put into the game. Mutant Football League seems mostly obscure nowadays. There's hardly any talk about it online or even on YouTube, and I felt like the game just came and went like a fart in the wind when it was released. Maybe time was too harsh to a series that was dormant longer than the Cold War. Okay, I made that up. But it is true that this game has made little to no impact. That's not going to stop development of a sequel though, as Mutant Football League 2 has been announced. Hopefully we get an even better game. And hey, this game has a mini game at halftime where you kill a bunch of refs with a gun. So I strongly recommend this game for Detroit Lions fans.